Welcome to part two of our interview with Betsy Belanger about the haunted Lemp Mansion. What are some of the identities of some of the most prominent spirits in the Lemp Mansion? Well, we if we go to those nine, we have the little girl whose name is Elizabeth. We'll start at the, the low end. And then we have actually one who is even more dormant than she is. Her name is Sarah. And Sarah may not even be there any longer. I have had no indication of her in 15 years, maybe. Maybe, at least, well, maybe 12. Um, she was a servant for the Lemps. She takes care of, took care and takes care of one of the Lemp children who was born very late in the life of William and Julia, the mom and the dad. And as a result, he has a lot of challenges. Mentally and physically, he was challenged. In fact, so much so that people um, said he was deformed. They call him names. I don't repeat those names, so don't ask me what they call him. Sure. I think it's very hurtful and, and wrong to do that. Um, and uh, I did get a communication that his name possibly could have been Zeke. And Zeke was uh, could have been a nickname, pet name, or it could have been his name. But he is a spirit there as well. And uh, then there is a man who I believe lived during the boarding house time as well. We now call him Oscar, but um, I had no name for him when I first had met him, <laughs> so to speak. He, um, he was very ominous. He didn't want me where I was, and I was upstairs again on the third floor. Um, and he was telling me to get out, get out my house, get out my house, and I didn't go. So he surrounded me with this awful, awful, awful smell. And it was so bad that it turned my stomach. I thought I was going to throw up. And so I was always calling him the stinky man. You know? mm-hmm. And then the ghost hunters, Taps, come, and they had an encounter with him and said it, I had always attributed to really bad breath. And they go, well, no, it's not bad breath. What it smells like is rotting flesh. And I went, ew, ew. You know, I've never smelled that, but I guess I have. So... I put it out there and told the story, and a guy on the tour gave him the name Oscar because of, who do you think he named him after? <laughs> Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, there you yeah. go, because he was grouchy and he smelled bad. Sure. <laughs> so we call him Oscar, and he kind of gravitates towards that. I don't think that's his name. Mm-hmm. In fact, I had a little kid, a little little kid, like eight years old on a tour once. I don't usually recommend this for kids, but sometimes it's so wonderful when they're there. And he goes, I think his name is Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so, I called him Jim for a while. That didn't work. But, but anyway, so that's Oscar. So that's, that's four right there. We have um, Julia Lamp, the mother, even though she did not die from suicide, and most of the time we do have earthbound spirits from sudden deaths, more so than, than other deaths, but that it also can occur, occur. She remains in the house looking for Zeke because she feels such guilt and remorse for leaving him, and he was only two when she died. So uh, we have uh, her two sons, besides Zeke being her son, but Billy Lemp, William Jr., who committed suicide in 1922. And we have Charles, who committed suicide in 1949, and he was the last Lemp to live there. Plus, I do attribute uh, Charles's dog to one of those nine identifiable spirits because um, she is probably the most popular spirit in the house because she's very forthcoming. She likes people. She likes to make her presence known. Sometimes she'll rub against somebody or sit on their feet or, uh, you know, a lot of, we'll see her, a lot of times it, it, it helps to have even dimmer light than what we, what we do the tour in. I can't make it all dark or people would stumble around, but in the dark room we're stationary and she, she enters the room and, She's a dog, though, so if people don't go, oh, there she is, then she just leaves. You know, <laughs> she goes back to what she was doing, I guess. But people even bring her little bones and milk bones. They bring Zeke toys um, and uh, leave them there. And, uh, and some people come to harass him because that's the way of the world, I think. And some other ghost shows out there who will re- remain nameless uh, think that's the way to engage a spirit is to harass them or agitate them. And um, then that's then they'll come out and see you. But Zeke is a little boy, and he hides now. No one ever sees him. 
let's talk about Oscar for a moment, uh, or the, the man that we've named or you've named Oscar. What time period is he from? Is he from the Lemp family area, or do you think he's from a different area? If he, I think if he was in he's fact from living the era of the boarding house, okay. And I think that that is why he is so possessive of the house. I can't attribute him to any Lemp family member. Mm-hmm. Um. William Sr., even though he committed suicide in 1904, is not a spirit there. So uh, that would be the only other spirit, and I can't imagine... Um, it, I, I, could, I guess I could imagine him saying, get out, this is my house. But I, from the way Oscar's demeanor, the where he was, the fact that he is always on the third floor pacing around... I think that he felt that, that that part of the house or maybe around there was his domain and, and belonged to him, or at least he could have some um, say-so in it anyway. Sure. So I think that he, he lived during the boarding house time. Now, exactly the era, I'm not sure of that. It could have been, I mean, it stopped being a boarding house in 1970, um, 1974, actually, so it could have been anywhere from 1950 to 1974. Now, the reason I say with such confidence, I guess, that Elizabeth lived during the 1950s is by the way she looks. Mm-hmm. She is, you know, her her dress and, and her demeanor and so forth. She it, looks like it. it it's very point. interesting to me that, that it seems like much of the family has returned to the home, in some cases, ones who didn't even die in the home, but they, they seem to come back to this, this place. Do you feel, do you have any evidence, do you have any direction on, on are they interacting with one another there? Okay, first of all, and I'm sorry if I misled you, any spirit that is in this house died there. Okay, okay. So there is no family member that has come back. Okay. Billy um, died there, committed suicide in his office. Charles committed suicide in a room that had been converted into a bedroom for him. His mother died uh, in her bedroom on the second floor. His father committed suicide in the adjoining room. They were connected by what is called a pocket door. Yeah. No, that, that, okay. And um, so that's where he committed suicide, even though he is not a spirit there. So um, all the rest of them that I've described have died there. Um, except for I am vague on Sarah. Maybe she died um, of a disease and decided to stay to still look after Zeke. I'm not sure. But um, uh, what was your original question? Sure. You, uh, yeah, my, my question is, there. is with all of these, these spirits there uh, from the same family, are they, are they interacting with each other on the other side? I do believe that they do to a certain extent, except for Elizabeth, not Elizabeth, I'm sorry, except for Julia. Now, Julia is the mother. Now, what I have, I've I've researched this for so long that I could not figure why Julia didn't get Zeke and they cross over together. That's my dearest wish. Mm -hmm. To reunite the two of them, they can cross over and and go on. Um, But... Zeke has the mind of an infant, a, a toddler. He he doesn't have the wherewithal to find anybody. But I know that he is aware of people around him, so I assume he's aware of his brothers being there. I know that uh, his brothers are very protective of him. They get very angry when people call him the bad name. It, it's an animal name. Mm-hmm. Um, when they call him that, he, he, they get angry. Um, and uh, But with Julia... My, I have researched this so much. Why would this be? So there are some spirits that have that live in a vacuum almost. They are in a tunnel or blinders, and they see nothing. They see nothing, but they see nothing. So they don't see other spirits. They don't see humans. They don't see. They just wander. And she has been wandering since her death in uh, 1906, looking for her baby. It's a very tragic tale. So I, you know, I I don't think she has any interaction with any other spirit. Now, when I do some communications, I will ask 
I use a dowsing rod at times. It's a very simplified way, and people, uh, anybody can use it. So I demonstrate it for him. And sometimes I'll I'll communicate with Billy Rump, who is my favorite, I guess, if you can have a favorite. I do a lot of communicating with him. I'll ask him, you know, are there others here, and is your is Charles here? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So I do think that they interact. Okay. Um, but um, so in in some respect, yes, they do. Now, I take um, that story of Elizabeth when she was with that little girl and go, oh, there he is. She was looking for Charles Lemp when she flitted away from this other human little girl. So I know that there is some communication there. Now, she died in the 1950s. He died in 1949, became an earthbound spirit there, and he witnessed her death. So I think that he is her protector. I think that he watches over her. With the spirits that that are there that that can interact with one another, what what is the overall force keeping them there? Why are they why are they still there, and why have they not uh, crossed over? If that's where you feel a lot of them, uh, other members of the family have have gone and what they've done. Well, um, if and during research about earthbound spirits, um, why why do they stay? And um, it's usually the manner of their death. And a suicide, a murder, you know, something that is unexpected. And at times that individual spirit, not, not just the limp spirits, but spirits who die like that, um, they become confused at times. They can. And sometimes they think they're still alive, you know, going through routines, living in their homes, going in their businesses and, and things like that. But with these spirits, I think the decision was made because of the suicide. Now, with Charles, it could have been a confusion after his suicide, plus the fact that he also took the life of his dog. His dog's name is Serva. When he took her life to, because he didn't trust anybody to love her or take care of her, he, they were attached together. He is so incredibly attached to that home and has been his entire life, when he was alive and in his death, that he has made that decision to stay there even after um, his confusion with his suicide. Now, Billy, William Jr., um, he, according to my communications, won't cross over because of his father being on the other side. He doesn't want uh, to confront him again. They had a very volatile relationship. He is angry at his father. He is afraid of his father. And so he made a decision to stay in an earthbound state. And that happens a lot with sudden deaths like that. Mm -hmm. Julia, uh, as I told you, is looking for her son. Zeke doesn't have the wherewithal to go anywhere. He he doesn't know how to do it. And without someone's help, meaning me or some other um, alive force, it's, it's next to impossible to get that spirit to cross over. The other ones I can't answer except that uh, little Elizabeth was murdered. Um, no telling what happened to Oscar. I don't know his death. I did hear a story from one of the owners. She took me aside one day. We were sitting in her office talking. She goes, did I ever tell you the story about the man who lived here during the boarding house who was stabbed to death? And the light bulbs just went ding, 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 ding all over me. I go, oh, my gosh, that's, that's the answer, maybe, that he was stabbed there, so he died as a murder. Um, and Sarah, my impression is that she remained there as a protector for Zeke. And as I also told you, I've had no indication of her for so many years, she could have already crossed over. Sure. So those, that, that is usually the main reason why there is an earthbound spirit. You know, when there are uh, people die, um, the majority of people cross over. They go on to their eternal bliss. Yeah. At times, those spirits who were, had life at one time will cross back. And they have little visits with, with people that they care about. They call them spirit guides. And they give them a little boost of encouragement or love or protection. They can't change things, but they, they make their presence known. And that's sometimes where you have somebody say, well, I think I saw my grandfather. Or my, when I saw uh, my Aunt Margie standing over the baby's crib, you know, or, or something like that. Or a little kid will say, there was a man in my room, and, I, and he looked just like this picture of Grandpa. 
those are spirit guides. They are not earthbound spirits. They cross back and forth. So they're not there all the time, um, which relieved me a little bit because I didn't want them watching every little thing I did. And it's a daunting task to identify a spirit guide. I will tell you that. So we have those spirits, but the, the majority of spirits who become earthbound, it's usually there is a reason why they are earthbound. But they usually, and I always say usually, and I always interject that a lot, because who knows? I've never died. You've never died. So we don't have first-hand knowledge of this. So we go by what our impressions are and what we read and our research and so forth that, uh, you know, why the spirits remain in, in our realm. That wraps up part two of our interview with Betsy Belanger. A big thank you to her for coming on the show today and sharing her experiences. Until next time, for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for your support. Thank you.